Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It's our ninth lesson on vectors, whereby you are looking at a past case equation done in 207, paper 2, question number 12. So it is our example 10, which reads that vector Q has a magnitude of 7 and is parallel to vector P. Given that our vector P is 3i minus j plus 1.5k, express vector Q in terms of i, j and k. So the key point that we are given is that the vectors are parallel, which means that um, one of the vectors uh, must be a scalar multiple of the other vector. So because you are given the magnitude of the first vector, which is vector Q, we are also going to find the magnitude for vector um, uh, P so that we find the scalar multiple between these two uh, vectors. So remember, if you are given a vector P, uh, we are given P as uh, 3i, then of course uh, minus j, uh, minus j, then of course plus 1.5 uh, k. So this one simply means that it's the same as saying vector p is equals to, uh, this is uh, xi, then of course plus uh, yj, then plus uh, zk, plus zk. So that the value of um, x will actually be 3, so directly you simply compare it directly. Then the value of y will be the coefficient of uh, negative j, which will be negative 1. Then the value of z is going to give us 1.5. So z will be uh, positive 1.5. So to find the magnitude, uh, remember magnitude for vector p uh, will actually be given by. So this one, to find the magnitude, you usually take the square root of, uh, you simply add x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this will be equal to, so this will be uh, the square root of, our x in this case is 3, so this will be 3 uh, squared, then of course plus, our y is negative 1, so negative 1 uh, squared, then I'm going to add, my z is 1.5, so plus 1.5 uh, uh, squared. Then uh, the answer, we need to find its square root. So this will be, uh, the square root of uh, 3 squared, I'm going to get positive 9. Uh, negative 1 squared, I'll get positive 1. Then 1.5 squared, uh, 1.5 squared, I'm going to get 2.25. So this will give me 2.25. So this will be equal to the square root of, if I take 9 plus 1, then plus uh, 2.25, I'm going to get 12.25. Uh, so this is 12. Uh, 0.25. The square root of 12.25, I'm going to get uh, 3.5. So uh, the magnitude of vector P is actually 3.5 units. Therefore, this is the modulus or the magnitude or the length of our uh, vector P. So because we have um, the magnitude or the length of vector P, then we are also given the magnitude uh, of the other vector q, we are simply going to compare uh, those two magnitudes so that we see uh, the scalar multiple that exists uh, between them. Therefore, for me to achieve that, I'm going to, to let, uh, so I'm going to let vector q uh, to be equal to uh, a certain constant k, then of course multiplied by the other vector, which is vector p. So because we have uh, the magnitude of the two vectors, I'm going to compare them in terms of their magnitude. So the magnitude of P and also the magnitude of Q should be related in such a way that there is a scalar multiple because we are told that the vectors are parallel, which means one of the vectors is a scalar multiple of the other. So the magnitude of vector um, Q, we are given on the question to be positive seven units. So seven units uh, will be equal to uh, K multiplied by the magnitude of vector p, we have found it as uh, 3.5, so multiplied by uh, 3.5. Therefore, to find the value of k, I'll simply divide through by 3.5. I also divide through by 3.5. So, of course, uh, the value of k uh, will be given by uh, 7 divided by uh, 3.5. We are going to get the value of k being equal to 2. Therefore, this one simply means that uh, if you take vector, the magnitude of vector Q uh, should be equal to a K, the magnitude of vector P, uh, which can be written as the magnitude of vector Q should actually uh, be equal to 
uh, k remember the value of k we have found it as 2 so this is 2 uh, multiplied by uh, the magnitude of vector uh, p which can also be interpreted as so remember if the magnitudes are being related in a uh, that particular manner it so it also means that the vectors can also be uh, related in the same way so it means that if you also take vector q it should be equal to twice the vector of uh, p then if i substitute the vectors that i have for vector q we don't have the value of vector q so i'm going to let uh, my vector q uh, so let uh, let the vector q uh, be given by uh, i'm going to let the vector q uh, to be given by the following let vector q be given by uh, xi plus yj then plus zk of course where x y and z are uh, unknown values so if i compare these two vectors this is what i'm going to get on the other side so i simply want to compare the two uh, vectors so this is what i'm going to get so i'm going to have so this is um the value for vector q so i want to substitute the values here I'm given that vector q is equals to 2 uh, the vector of p so vector q i'm letting it to be xi then of course uh, plus yj then plus zk so this one should be equal to uh, 2 into vector p the value of vector p we were given as a uh, 3i so this was a uh, 3i then of course uh, minus j uh, minus j then plus 1.5k plus 1.5k so if i open the brackets i'm going to have um, xi then of course plus yj then plus zk being equal to if i multiply through by 2 i'm going to get a uh, 6i then of course 2 multiplied by negative j will get negative a uh, 2j then of course 2 multiplied by 1.5 uh, 2 times 1.5 we are going to get a positive 3 so this will be a uh, plus 3 uh, k which should be equal to uh, x y and z then we'll simply compare the uh, the vectors in the same direction because remember uh, you simply equate uh, the vectors in the x direction so in the x direction we have x then here we have 6 it means that the value of x will actually be equal to 6 in the y direction uh, that is in the j direction we have negative 2 so it means the value of y will be equal to negative 2 then in the k direction we have z which is actually a 3 so the value of z will be equal to 3 therefore it means that our um, vector q will be equal to remember we said that uh, we had let vector q to be xi plus uh, yj then of course uh, plus z k so if i substitute the values it means vector q will be given by my value of x is 6 so it will just be uh, 6i uh, so this will be 6i then plus uh, yj my value of y is negative 2 so this will be negative uh, so this will be 6i then of course minus 2j uh, minus 2j then plus uh, we are going to add 3k because the value of z is actually a 3 therefore we are told to express q in terms of i j and k so this is the vector q in terms of i j and k then uh, we look at our example number 11 which is also a past case equation which was tested in 2013 paper 2 question number 8 so it treats that the position vectors of uh, the points f g and h are uh, vector f vector g and vector h respectively Point H divides FG uh, in the ratio 4 to negative 1, express H in terms of uh, F and G. So uh, whenever there is a negative in the ratio, it means that we are dealing with what we call an external division. So we need to interpret it. So we are going to assume, suppose it was an internal division. How will you treat this particular uh, ratios? So you are told that H is dividing FG. So it means that you will be having F on this side. Uh, then g on the other side uh. so i'm assuming if it was an internal division uh, so that we find uh, the ratios suppose it was an internal division if h is dividing fg it means that the h will be uh, in between uh, uh, f and g so so that the ratio actually the ratio will be 
uh, f to h to the ratio of if h was in between it will be to the ratio of h to g this one should give you uh, a ratio of 4 to negative 1 so this will be the case if it was an internal division that is if all the uh, ratios were positive therefore it means that um, by direct comparison if you take fh then you divide with the uh, hg this one is going to give you uh, the ratio of 4 over negative 1 so it means the ratio of fh is actually 4 therefore uh, the ratio of this one is actually 4 then the ratio of hg will be negative 1 so this hg uh, hg this ratio would be negative 1 but this is an external division and that is why we have a negative so if it is an external division this is how we are going to treat it uh, so if it's an external division it means that uh, the dividing point should be on the outer side of the line therefore it means that uh, for external division a uh, point f should be here the dividing point should be outside the line huh? so the dividing point is uh, h so we are going to put h on this side because this is an external division then of course g should be in between so the key point to remember is that for external divisions the dividing point uh, is always on the further end uh, of this particular line so in relation to the ratio that we have uh, we are we can see that fg its ratio is actually uh, that is fh its ratio is 4 so this is our f then h so it means fh is actually the whole line uh. so the whole of this line uh, fh we can see that fh its ratio is 4 then um, uh, we also have the ratio of what hg hg its ratio is uh, negative 1 but because we have already taken h outside uh, this particular line it means that the negative is just to show you that uh, the h is lying outside uh, outside uh, the line fg therefore it means that uh, if hg is negative 1 then actually gh will be positive 1 because uh, remember these are, are vectors uh, if from um, if the distance from h to g if this direction is negative 1 then the direction from g to h this direction will be positive that is why gh is actually uh, a positive and not a negative then if f to h is 4 it means that the remaining ratio here will be positive 3 such that 3 plus 1 you'll get a total ratio of 4 which is the line uh the actually the line f h so that is how to uh, interpret whenever you are given an external division now having interpreted that uh we simply need to continue with um, the working and remember these are position vectors uh? therefore they should be uh, joined to the origin so let me join them to the origin so f should be joined to 0 0 which is the origin then of course um, also h should be joined to the origin then of course point g should also be joined to uh, the origin 0 0 so this is what we are calling our um, origin the point 0 0 such that this is what we are calling our um, vector uh, o f this is o f then remember we are told that such that um, the position vectors of f g and h are uh, small f g and h so small f will be represented by this vector here so this is the small f that is vector o f then o g of course will be represented by uh, vector small g so this is our vector small g then o h will be represented by small vector uh, h small vector h now the question wants us to express h in terms of f and g therefore to achieve that we are going to employ what we call the ratio theorem so if i apply the ratio theorem uh the middle uh coordinate which is og should be able to give me uh so og uh vector og should be able to give me so i take this uh, ratio which is three divided by the total ratio of the line is three plus one which is four then you multiply with the opposite vector the opposite vector in this case is or h which is actually small vector h so this is small vector h then i'm going to add uh the other ratio is one divided by the total ratio of the line is actually three plus one which is four multiplied with the opposite uh vector which is actually small vector f but remember og og small vector g therefore we are having a uh, g being equal to three over four vector h then we are going to add a quarter of vector small 
f so a quarter of vector small f so we are told to express h in terms of f and g so in short they want us to make uh, f to be the subject of this particular formula so uh, in order for us to make f subject of the um, uh, formula so this is what we are going to do so we need to remain with the uh, h on one side uh, therefore i'll take this one to the other side so that i remain with a uh, vector g then minus a quarter uh, vector f uh, should able should be able to give me 3 over a uh, 4 vector h so i want to remain with h alone so for me to achieve that i'm going to multiply through by the reciprocal so the reciprocal of 3 over 4 of course is a uh, 4 over a uh, 3 so i also multiply this other side with the reciprocal which is uh, 4 over 3 so that the 4 and 4 will cancel out the 3 and 3 will cancel out so that we are going to remain with uh, vector h uh, which is going to give us if i open uh, this bracket i'm going to have uh, 4 over 3 4 over 3 vector g then this one will be 4 over 3 multiplied by so this will be minus a quarter then of course multiplied by 4 over 3 of vector f therefore it means that h uh, vector h will be equal to uh, 4 over 3 4 over 3 uh, vector g so of course the 4 and 4 will cancel here so that we remain with negative a third negative a third so yeah the 4 have cancelled out uh. this one has cancelled with this so it remain with negative a third of vector f which can also be grouped as i can also group a third outside uh. so it's the same as saying a third uh, into so if i divide through by a third here i'm going to remain with for uh, g then of course minus the vector f so we have expressed uh, the vector uh, h in terms of f and g so this is our vector h so this is h in terms of f and g so that is how to deal with um, a question involving external division the dividing point should always be outside uh, that particular line which is being divided so uh thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson and not take it for granted in case you're new to the channel kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever i upload a new video you'll get notified so in our next class we'll be looking at further examples on vectors until next time this is kind tuition academy thank you